Oh, welcome back. Uh, I'm actually going to be looking at convolution and giving you a demonstration of convolution. I hope it works because it's a bit of a conflict between the microphone and the feedback from the speakers and so on, uh, but I'll try my best. Um, now, convolution um, is... Um, we, we can look at the formula for it. Is um, There's the continuous time version for two signals f of t and g of t is given by the integral of f of tau g t minus tau d tau or you can also write it f of t minus tau g of tau d tau the other way around that's called uh, so they commute uh, f star g which is the f uh, convolved with g is the same as g convolved with f it should be written the other way around actually uh, both is the same and um, there's a, what is actual convolution? Well, convolution is really basically filtering. It's putting, a, in engineering terms, it's putting a signal. In our case, it's one-dimensional. It can be like images and so on. It's one-dimensional. So a signal through some kind of filter and getting an output. Um, so, I mean, we could, we could design a filter, for example, put some speech through it, and uh, the output would be filtered. If we knew the impulse response of the of the uh, filter, uh, then we just do a convolution. Convolution can take time in um, discrete time when you when sample signals, so it's often done with fast Fourier transforms to speed it up. There's a graphical way of doing it, which we do in class. If we are convolving two pulses here, there's one blue one and uh, a red one. Now the red one's been folded. That was the old German word was for, for folding. It, was, it used to be called folding, where you flip one of the impulse responses back and then you shift it and then you add up, you integrate over the other. So as it's overlapping the, the green bit there uh, and, and you end up with the solution. That's the output of the filter is a triangular wave. In this case we've got a pulse again, a red one. And this guy here, the blue one, is a decaying exponential, e to the minus t or something. And if you take its Laplace transform, that's a 1 upon s plus 1, let's say. And so that's like the the um, first-order system transfer function, or, or impulse response in this case. So it's like an RC network, a capacitor charging up and then discharging. And you can see, again, the impulse response, the the, the pulse has been reversed, and then, it, although it doesn't look as if it's been reversed, and then the um, it's integrated and so on, and you get this response. Yeah, um, yeah. Historically, it's interesting because this goes back to 1754. D'Alembert, uh, French mathematician, mentioned this in 1754. Recherche sur différents points importants du système du monde. It's a research of different important points of systems of the world I think that means <laughs> and uh, and this expression which is what we had mentioned earlier is, is used by F uh, Francois Lacroix um, treatised treatised on difference in series um, and way back in the 18th century and of course Simon uh, Laplace oh, sorry Pierre Laplace and Jean-Baptiste Fourier we study in the uh, this uh, course Two famous French mathematicians uh, also um, uh, uh, have mentioned this way back. But what we're looking at here, what we implement is actually discrete time convolution. So there's no integration, there's a summation. And we don't sum from minus infinity to infinity, we sum from zero to some finite length. So this is the general way of writing it. So we have two sequences of data or vectors of data in MATLAB, F and G. In this case, F is going to be, say, my voice, and G is going to be the impulse response of a large building. Uh, or you can do it the other way around. You can write it F convolved with G. And it is multiplication and summation. And uh, this can take quite a while if it's a long impulse response. Um, and it's often done with FFTs, as I say. So without more ado, let's have a look at um, the place we're going to take the impulse response from and the place we're going to take the impulse response from is the um, St Albans Cathedral in England, that's outside London 
at York University I've done recordings of various buildings, famous buildings uh, and well there it is uh, it's actually the Lady Chapel in there so it's just a sort of subset of it we can have a quick look at the actual place it's quite impressive if I go back um, play a bit from this video see the size of the place there's the choir singing in there you can have a look at that if you like online uh, but um, I have the impulse response then of part of that um, um, cathedral which is provided by University of York it's available freely online and uh, I can play out the impulse response but you won't hear very much it's um, St. Albs, St. Alb not Wav. have you heard that let's open it with this free thing called wave, wave pad editor the free version and here's what it looks like you can see there's been a big bang at the back of the room somebody bursts a balloon or something like that like a little starting pistol and then you put a microphone somewhere and pick up the decaying sound and that's the impulse response of the building there's quite a science to that a bit of an art and people spend a long time doing these recordings it's, so it captures the acoustics the idea being that you could keep that on a computer somewhere and um, use it and, and uh, then you could you could play in a in a recording studio or sing and then you could give the illusion that you're actually in the cathedral itself if you knew the impulse response because you do a convolution I record it my voice uh, I wouldn't uh, inflict any singing on you so um, here's my voice this is a test recording. I want to see if MATLAB and convolution will work. So that's all just my voice. Uh, so I'm going to use MATLAB to uh, put them together. So I made a script in MATLAB and this is uh, how it works. Um, you read in the impulse response which is a WAV file. You don't have to know the sampling rate. Well, here I know it's 44.1 kilohertz like hi-fi and it stored in a vector y we then plot it and then I play it out just like I did there but through MATLAB this time at the right sampling rate 44.1 kilohertz I then pause because otherwise it happens really quick and I read in the um, my toms.wav that's the one of me speaking and it's stored in u with the same sampling rate 44.1 kilohertz you don't want to have different sampling rates um, and then I plot it uh, and then I listen to it you hear it again and then we do our convolution and convolution is carried out uh, in the time domain here by just this command conv uv why because we could write our own one because it's just a summation but why bother when there's a MATLAB command there already there be part of the signal processing toolbox I think and then I play out the convolved, convolved um, signal sound Z which is called Z uh, and I could plot it as well actually I might do that I uh, haven't done that let's do plot um, Z that would be interesting to see right so I'll run this um, thing and do a commentary as we're going that's the impulse response of the building, the church. That's my voice. You should hear it in a minute. This is a test recording. I want to see if MATLAB and convolution will work. Okay. Turn up the um, volume of the... I don't think the volume is very high. This is a test recording. I want to see if MATLAB and convolution will work. And that was the, that's the convolved version you've just heard. It 
that should plot it in a second. Oh, that was that. It was the convolved. It's actually overwritten it. Sorry, that is the. So that's the uh, convolved one. I forgot to put. I should put um, figure in here. And then um, that means it uh, draws a new figure. So let's just do that one more time because I'm not sure if the volume is very high the first time. Let's repeat it again. So that's the sound of the gunfire. <laughs> that's my voice which is coming out any second. This is a test recording. I want to see if MATLAB and convolution will work. Now it's going to do the convolution and play out the convolved signal. Here's a convolved signal. This is a test recording. I want to see if MATLAB and convolution will work. So that's me speaking as if I was in the church. Notice the difference between the waveforms. Uh, one's gone through this reverberant filter, so they don't look quite the same. They've got a similar sort of appearance. This is um, a reverberant waveform now. And uh, what's uh, interesting about this is we can do the opposite as well. Although I'm not doing it here. That's called deconvolution. And if you had a signal like this and you wanted to get back to the original, you would apply deconvolution to it. That's it. Thank you.